listen to the speech and also to give the speaker as much feedback as possible and deal with particular and this is a particular patient's problem. His particular speech in this case, as you probably can see from the board, is dealing with body language and gesture. In this case, he has a speech purpose and a point the message he wants to convey. And this purpose is supported by different features. And these features are, of course, eye contact, manner, posture, gesture, body movement, and facial expression. Now, looking at these items right now, does anyone have any questions about what these particular items mean? What does manner mean? Manner, in this case, is how you actually hold yourself when you're delivering, how you actually express your body. Now, body movement is actual just movement. Okay. But when you're actually walking around, you have a specific aura or effect when you're moving around. Sometimes you may show confidence. And sometimes you may kind of be a little scared. But that's how you actually show yourself as a speaker. Any other questions about these particular items? Okay, good. Now, when you're listening to Alexa's speech, I want you to consider each and every one of these items. Think about what you thought was good and what you thought could be improved. And I want you to write a specific item. You can't just say, the eye contact was good. <coughs> you have to give a reason why it was good. Oh. What part of the speech, the eye, con eye contact was good. All right? Does everyone understand? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, we will move into actually listening to Lester's prepared speech. All right. So, the speech objectives are to use stance, movement, gesture, facial expression, and eye contact to express the message and to achieve the speech purpose. To make your body language smooth and natural. The title of the speech is Green Ball. Our speaker is Alex Kushia. Alex, come to the stage. Now, everyone understood that his main projection was being having a relaxing atmosphere. Remember what the purpose of the speech was? Was it a relaxing speech? Entertaining speech? Mm. Inspirational speech? Mm. How many of you thought that he projected confidence in the message he was trying to convey? I see no hands. If you thought that he projected the right manner for the purpose of his speech, please raise your hand. Obviously no one thought that. <laughs> now, if you actually wanted him to provide, project the right manner for the topic that he chose and the message that he chose, what advice would you give him? That's my search. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, something I want to discuss. This is the we where we can dig further to with the essence of the good speech. And I think all those things are important, but not as important as the content. How to put your uh, idea together, how to make your message impact. The how to give audience what they want. So, just basic technique of those things would be sufficient, I think. And discussing about these matters more than more than that would be, I think, uh, we we gonna be taking something very trivial. Okay, thank you for your. <laughs> <laughs> Now I understand. I understand where you're coming from. I I, I agree. Are you from a <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> and you know it's a very good place. But <laughs> the thing is, obviously, 
content of a speech is very important. If you look at any judging criteria, it's more than 50% of any speech. However, in our particular case right now, Alex chose the speech for body language. It was his choice. If he wanted to choose a speech focusing on content, he would have chosen that project. And therefore, that is why I'm focusing on body language right now. Now, in other words, I think his manner was sufficient enough to deliver an inspirational speech. Right, thank you for your time. <laughs> now, to further, making further progress on this particular point, I'd like to ask a question to ask. Now, Ismi, let's not Ismi brought up a very excellent point on dealing with the actual content of the speech. Now, would you prefer to continue on with this particular part of the clinic, or would you prefer to actually delve deeper into the actual content and structure of the speech? I want as much feedback as possible. So, after we finish this, can we then go into content as well? Okay. So, that's the book. Mm -hmm. All right. So, we'll move on quickly now. We only have, in our case, only have 15 minutes left of this particular situation, so we're going to move right quickly on this. <laughs> and that means that what I want is I want to hear a good point and I want to hear a point of improvement on each item. I only want to hear two for each. And I want people to volunteer. Otherwise, I'll have to call you. <laughs> Let's move on this very quickly, all right? <laughs> Boom, posture. What was good about his posture, specifically? Raise your hand. Okay. He stands straight, okay, showing his confidence. If he started like this, he didn't show his confidence. But I wanted him to speak like this to send the uh, energy to the audience. Mm -hmm. That would be mm -hmm. something I would like to see. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think his posture was good enough to deliver the uh, inspirational speech. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you go like this, then it's, some people perceive it's like being a pet. I think being natural is better than the, uh, uh, making some people perceive that they're being a pet. Okay. Very good. I think it's up to the situation. I think almost, um, so to say, Alex Akun, like, is very to feel relaxed and confident. But um, I think sometimes, I think using uh, like this, uh, this just, uh, your purpose is uh, inspirational. So sometimes using it like, like this, we feel more your enthusiasm and uh, more, may, may feel inspiration more than like this. All right, thank you. All right. Yes. We have one minute left on this particular workshop. And so just to kind of summarize what we both covered here, in this case, he tried to deliver an inspirational speech using body language. In this particular case, the body language he was trying to use is in these different items to effectively convey story. In this case, mountain climbing. He had a lot of different elements in this particular story. Some people were not very inspired. Some people were, probably. And I think that my personal opinion here, I'm just going to say it, is that if you want to produce an inspirational speech, you need to cut down to the essence of the speech. If you want, if you have an image, for example, a green ball, you can't just pick it up at the beginning, drop it in the middle, and then bring it back up at the end. You need to carry the image throughout the entire speech. That way people will remember. Also, another thing that I have always learned in writing is if you're going to use something, make sure you mention it at the beginning. For example, if someone's going to be shot by a gun, make sure the gun is actually above the fireplace at the very beginning of the speech. That way there is no surprises. So if you're going to mention Obama, make sure Obama's at the beginning. Make sure Obama's in the middle. And make sure Obama's at the end. Start us on a, on, a, on a journey. Take us through. But don't drop us suddenly in the middle. Uh -huh. Then bring it back home. And I think that makes what help have an excellent speech. Now, that pretty much ends the coin for today. I hope you got as much feedback as you possibly can. If you have any additional questions, I will be glad to talk after the session. And I think this was a very good speech clinic. Thank you for all your cooperation. Yeah. Yeah.